coming up, living a life to empower women and young girls of all ages. That's the mission of one local businesswoman. We'll hear from Christy Reeves and all about her story coming up in this week's Louisiana Women Report. Also, CY5 Metro Council districts are now divided between the city of Baton Rouge and the newly incorporated St. George. How they plan to help accommodate both sides. That's next on Fox 44 First Edition. All right, my check, my check. One, two, three, four. My check, my check. How are you? It's kind of loud. <laughs> Brandon's giving the head shake. No. We gotta get through Halloween and Thanksgiving first. Yeah. Live, you're watching Fox 44 First Edition. Well, good morning and thank you for joining us for Fox 44 First Edition. I'm Kelly M. Biley. And I'm Jaron Jordan. It is 8.01 on this Thursday morning. Let's check in with meteorologist Ashley Ruiz. She's tracking our Thursday morning forecast mm -hmm. and we're off to a cool start. Oh, I'm chilly right now. I know it's cool in the studio, but... It's chilly outside mm -hmm. as well. Very fall like temperatures in the lower 50s this morning. And you can see 52 feels like 52 degrees. And we have a northeast wind around 7 miles per hour. So we have that dry air mass in place. 52 in Baton Rouge, Kentwood, 50 degrees, new roads, 52. So temperatures today are going to struggle to warm up because we have cloud cover right now. Temperature change over the last 24 hours, anywhere between 15 and 20 degrees cooler this morning than it was yesterday. So we are definitely feeling the effects of the cold front and we'll continue to see the effects of the cold front for today. But again, those clouds are going to keep us from warming up much warming up quickly in fact so today temperatures as I mentioned are going to struggle to warm and if we see a few breaks here and there we should be allowed to warm up into the upper 60s to lower 70s overall it's going to be a pretty nice fall like day now let's go check on your traffic very very slow on I-12 this morning just to the west of Walker all the way to almost the, the O'Neill exit as well so there is a report of another accident hopefully everything's okay out there we'll keep you updated 
updated on this and more weather that's coming up. And of course, this is sponsored by the Murphy Law Firm. Jaron. All right, Ashley, in your Fox 44 Crime Tracker this morning, the sentencing for the man who admitted to stealing hundreds of thousands of dollars from the Our Lady of the Lake Hospital Foundation has been delayed. John Paul Funes's sentencing was scheduled for today in federal court, but that will now take place next week. Funes pleaded guilty to siphoning more than $500,000 from the Our Lady of the Lake Hospital Foundation. And a Destrehan woman has been arrested after her two-year-old niece died in a hot car. St. Charles Parish Sheriff's officials say that this woman, 48-year-old Leslie Sanabria, is being held on negligent homicide charges for leaving her niece, Avril, in a car for six hours back at the beginning of October. The temperature that day hit 97 degrees. Authorities say they believe the temperature inside that car may have actually gone up to 125 degrees within 15 minutes. Sanabria claims she thought the child's grandmother, who was in the car with them, had taken her. Well, the family of a New Orleans TV news anchor killed in a plane crash is now suing the plane's owner and manufacturer. Nancy Parker's husband and children have filed suit against Drug Fighters Enterprises and the Lie Coming Engines. The lawsuit claims the biplane carrying WVUE news anchor Nancy Parker had a defective engine. Parker was shooting a story about pilot Franklin Augustus when the plane crash landed shortly after takeoff. So far, the National Transportation Safety Board has only said the plane was having mechanical problems. All right, guys, today in Baton Rouge, we are counting down the days until those presents are under the tree. And if you're looking to get a head start on your Christmas shopping, we've got a spot for you. Fox 44's Courtney Williams is live this morning at the Raising Canes River Center with more on holidays, which kicks off today and continues through the weekend. Courtney, good morning. Hey, good morning, you guys. Well, if you're looking to shop just for yourself today or get a head start on that holiday Christmas shopping, you can definitely come out to holidays here. That's kicking off today through Saturday at the Raisin Cades River Center. I'm just in one of the vendor booths, and then there's so much to offer. It could be for your home or it could be for a loved one or a child as they have many different kind of items to offer. I got a chance to walk around and just check out a few things, and there's definitely some things I want to buy myself. Now, this is all for the Junior League of Baton Rouge that's hosting this event is actually the 36th year they're actually getting started um, through this event. It actually benefits um, just causes they support, including the LSU Ag Center, East Baton Rouge Parish Schools, Big Buddy, and Our Lady of the Lake Children's Hospital. Again, the shopping does start today and ends on Saturday. Advanced tickets start at $12, and if you pay at the door, it's $15. And that can be found on through Ticketmaster. Again, as you can see, a lot of different options uh, to choose from. If you want to come out and shop, I again, I definitely want to just come out and get some things for myself. But again, you can start coming out today and ends Saturday. So you can definitely head over to our free BR Proud app or you can visit our website at BRProud.com just to check out all the information about holidays. It's definitely a great cause of benefiting some great organizations and of course the school system here in East Baton Rouge Parish. But for now reporting live, I'm Courtney Williams, Fox 44 News. Thanks, Courtney. Looks like a lot of fun. All right, Baton, Baton Rouge businesswoman Christy Reeves lives a mission to help empower women and young girls of all ages. She's also a family woman as well as a leader, and she's featured in this week's Louisiana Women Report. Christy Reeves has been a longtime advocate for women. I would say that I've been interested in following the life of women from, you know, from birth to to as they as they leave the planet. And um, there's always a vulnerability for women. She's also a very successful businesswoman. And I mean, I'm a five time CEO, and so I've been fortunate that I've been able to bypass those kinds of notions. She's worked with organizations like the Girl Scouts and I'm That Girl, all in an effort to help empower women and young girls at every stage of their life. Overcoming these kind of perceptions that women aren't going to be the CEO, aren't going to be the elected official is a challenge, especially if you're someone who has ambition. Reeve says without ambition, she wouldn't be where she is today. In fact, I was told I had to prove myself after being in a company for a very long time, whereas I don't think I would have had to, that same, a man would have had that same exact issue. And she didn't let that stop her. She recently became the vice president of community relations and government affairs for Oshner here in Baton Rouge. I also know that women make the greatest, um, have the greatest influence over 
the health of the family and health of society, basically. They make decisions about where their kids go to the doctor, when they go to the doctor, how often they see the doctor. Those things combined um, are indicators of how well and healthy a family is. So being engaged and partnering with women's groups makes just a lot of sense in terms of having the greatest um, health for a community. At Oshner, she hopes to continue to inspire and encourage others. And so I think it starts just with your own team and the people that you interact with day to day, whether it's your children, your friends, your staff members, our patients that walk in the door and maybe we just have one interaction with, giving them that opportunity to see themselves as what they can potentially be, that full potential they can reach. Reeve says the sky is the limit. All you have to do is reach for it. Fortunately, it's changing. I mean, I think there's a lot more opportunity for women. I think there's, it's a really exciting time to be a woman. And you get to, you know, have a family, have a career, all the things that maybe the previous generation didn't get to have. But it doesn't mean that you can't, you, you don't still have some kind of perceptions in front of you that you have to overcome. And that was our Carly Lang reporting. Turning now to continuing coverage, we're learning this morning that five East Baton Rouge Metro Council districts are now divided between the city of Baton Rouge and the newly incorporated St. George. Fox 44's Jonah Gilmore joins us now with how this will all work. Jonah. Hey, good morning, you guys. Many have been asking questions, trying to figure out how this Baton Rouge St. George split will affect them. Metro Councilman Matt Watson provided me with this map showing how five districts in Baton Rouge will continue to service those areas, including areas inside the newly incorporated St. George. Changing the makeup of the city of Baton Rouge, the newly elected city of St. George will share some elected officials. Four districts that are going to have somewhat, you know, a tremendous amount or a small amount of what would be the city of St. George. This map shows some districts will change with the white representing Baton Rouge and yellow for St. George. For matters that of, of the parish, the Metro Council will still be here. It will still continue to represent the constituents, uh, but they will also have the city of St. George represent them on different aspects. Metro Councilman Dwight Huston says when it comes to East Baton Rouge Parish, both cities will get their fair share of services. It's all about delivering services to constituents. And the constituent doesn't really care which entity provides the services. They just want to be sure that both entities are set up, able to provide those services to them. Metro Councilman Matt Watson says, no matter where you live, we're not a representation of any one city. Everyone will be treated equally. The Metro Council is a division of the parish as a whole. Both councilmen tell me they have one goal, and that's to serve the people of this parish. They say if you still have concerns, you can simply reach out to them. To see this map and other stories about the newly incorporated city of St. George, visit our website, vrproud.com. Back to you guys. Thanks so much, Jonah. Well, we now know that there's a chance for a three-person runoff in the race for state Senate here in Baton Rouge. One Republican donor, meanwhile, is offering to help a candidate run for judge, but only if he drops out of this race. Republican businessman Lane Grigsby has confirmed he made the offer to Franklin Foyle. Foyle is competing against a fellow Republican, Steve Carter, and Democrat Beverly Brooks Thompson for the District 16 Senate seat. Grigsby says he's worried Foyle and Carter will split the Republican vote and then Thompson will win. The donor has made it clear that he wasn't offering Foyle a judgeship, only financial help to run for judge. Foyle says he will, quote, make his own decisions meanwhile and will not be influenced by outside interest. Well, it is shaping up to be an historic day in Washington, D.C. The first congressional hearing to create a Smithsonian and National American Latino Museum is scheduled for today. Among the attendees expected to attend include CNN correspondent Marie, Maria Cardona, actress Rosario Dawson, and civil rights activist Dolores Huerta. Uh, HR 2420 has more than 200 co-sponsors and a bipartisan Senate counterpart. The Friends of the American Latino Museum says that it focuses on creating a museum that wants to inspire and encourage, respect, and understand the richness and diversity of the American Latino experience within the United States. And the war over impeachment in Washington may actually take a pause today, but that's only after a very key Democrat involved in the ongoing impeachment inquire, inquiry passed away earlier this morning. We're talking about Maryland Congressman Elijah Cummings. He had been facing health issues for decades, but as Fox News correspondent Doug Lizader reports this morning from Washington, the news of his death comes as a surprise. Come on, man. Elijah Cummings could be a fiery, powerful voice in Washington. He served in Congress more than 20 years, finally becoming one of the three committee chairmen leading the impeachment inquiry against President Trump. Then may very well come a time 
when a peace impeachment is appropriate. And Cummings was reluctant to move toward impeachment, but his actions mirrored House Speaker Nancy Pelosi eventually embracing the effort. And since then, tempers in Washington have flared. Yesterday, Pelosi stood up and pointed her finger at the president at a White House meeting on Syria and Turkey. The president said she was unhinged. She saw something else. What we witnessed on the part of the president was a meltdown. Sad to say. The president later said on Twitter she had a total meltdown in the White House today. It was very sad to watch. Pray for her. She is a very sick person. Let them work it out. We shouldn't be over there. But the president had to spend much of the day defending his strategy to remove troops from northern Syria amidst growing bipartisan anger. The joint resolution is agreed to. The House passed a measure opposing the president's troop withdrawal with many Republicans joining in. And there could be more drama today on the impeachment front, with former European Union Ambassador Gordon Sondland expected to testify. But Democrats may have to regroup as the news of Elijah Cummings' death begins to sink in and Congress remembers a man whose presence has always loomed large here. And that was Fox News correspondent Doug Luzader reporting. All right, well, we are tracking the tropics this morning as there appears to be something brewing in the Gulf of Mexico that could be heading our way. We're going to send it over now to Fox 44 meteorologist Ashley Ruiz for more on the development. Ashley. Yes, good morning, you guys. Invest 96 likely to become either a subtropical or a tropical storm later on today. If it becomes that, it would be Nestor, and it has a high chance of formation again within the next 48 hours as it moves closer to the northern and north central Gulf Coast. Now, there could be several scenarios that set up. Again, it's so early, but it's going to move quickly. So this is when we um, would really have to watch things pretty carefully. So scenario one, one, it would clip the mouth of the Mississippi River in southeast Louisiana, which would cause some coastal flooding and some flooding rains as well. Here in Baton Rouge, we would get some showers and it'd be breezy, but then that's really about it. And then it would aim for Florida. After that scenario two, it heads toward Florida. We locally, at least for our coastal areas, we'd have rough seas, but no local impacts. And we'd be mostly dry this weekend, both Friday night and then Saturday and then scenario three, it would head closer to southeast Louisiana, which yes, our impacts would be a little greater. But at this point, models are kind of in a consensus and an agreement showing that it is likely to track more so to the Florida panhandle or even the big bend of Florida. Of course, there are a few outliers, but again, when they are so closely tied together and in agreement, then that's when we really start to pay attention. So something we're watching very carefully, but if this were to be the case, we'd have a pretty nice weekend. So something we're watching, you can count on us to keep you posted on air and online. Even the European model is showing closer to the Florida panhandle as well. So again, we'll keep you posted with any changes. So let's send it back on over to you guys. All right, Ashley, thank you. Still ahead on Fox 44 First Edition. Have you ever wondered how to get a wider smile? Our Fox 44 evening anchor, Chad Sabaty, sits down with a celebrity dentist for some information about the best tips with concerning your dental hygiene. We'll have that for you coming up next.
October is National Dental Hygiene Month and very pleased to be joined by a special guest, Dr. Catrice Austin, dentist to the stars, y'all, the celebrity queen of smiles. Dr. Austin, how are you? I am amazing. I love that in Rouge. We love it too. We're partial. We're BR proud. And <laughs> hey, we're all about great dental hygiene and it's so important to health and well-being. But yes. you're here today to talk about the insider secrets, right? To yes. keeping that, that smile nice and white. Nice and white. Everybody wants a whiter smile. It's one of the easiest and most affordable things that you could do to upgrade your smile. Um, but what I need people to know is not all teeth whiteners are created equal. Mm -hmm. You go to the toothpaste aisle, you have all these things to choose from, and a lot of times people just don't know what to do. So the first thing that you should do is analyze the color of your teeth. You can have your dentist do it, or online you could get one of these cute little right. tooth color charts, hold it up to your teeth, see where you are. The darker your teeth are, the stronger the whitener you need. So if you're here on the yellow side of things, you may need to have it professionally done. But if you're just a little white, a little yellow, then you can do some at-home remedies. Almost like you're shopping for house paint. You just got to exactly. match it up. Exactly. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, I never thought about that. All right. <laughs> now, the second thing that I need everybody to know is that there are some culprits. Now, you, I think you just mentioned the drinking coffee. coffee. Way too much. Mm -hmm. But what you can do is bypass it. Once you recognize the things that are staining your teeth, like co sure. coffee, Sip it through a straw, bypass right. the teeth, and you can save the stains from getting on your teeth. Easy so enough. That's a nice little trick. And then the third thing is there are two powerful tools that can really keep your teeth clean every day and stain free an electric toothbrush and a water pick. I say, Chad, when you bring these two things together, mm -hmm. it's like a car wash for your smile. A match made in heaven. <laughs> that's a good analogy right there. Yes. We mentioned being a celebrity dentist to the stars, Miss Cardi B, yes. you've been working with for a long time. What's that? experience like when you meet these celebrities who are just real people. They're real people that need to go to the dentist too and a lot of times like you and I they're busy their schedules get so busy that they don't think about it so sometimes I'll be I'll approach someone and just take a chance and a lot of times they don't have a dentist right. so it's amazing to work with people they're regular people Cardi is amazing she's this animated character but she's this down sweet Bronx girl at the end of the day so where can our viewers go to find out more information and to stay in touch with you well you could go to the VIP to get more information on teeth whitening and if you're looking for a smile makeover VIP smiles.com and while Dr. Austin's in town she's gonna get some great food in Baton Rouge yes. down in New Orleans oh my and goodness. can't beat it I'm gonna exercise when I get back to New York <laughs> <laughs> and then brush the teeth a little extra from yes. all the good food down here Dr. Austin thank you so much for your time my pleasure we appreciate it, and y'all heed this great advice. All right, Chad, thank you. And y'all, y'all just heed what's on this table right now. Mmm, we are cooking up some shrimp and sausage parmesan pasta with Chef Gay Sandals of Tony Chatteries. Today is National Pasta Day. We'll share this easy, uh, easy recipe with you coming up next.
It is 825 on this Thursday morning. This is the part of the show where I really wish that you had smell of vision that you could turn on because it smells so great in the studio this morning. We have Chef Gay Sandals from Tony Shastri's joining us this morning. Good morning to you. Thank you. You're talking about a lot of new things that Tony's uh, has to offer and it's right in time for National Pasta Day, which is today. And so we're going to be using some of these new things that uh, folks can find on their store shelves to whip up this uh, wonderful, wonderfully, uh, wonderful smelling pasta shrimp dish. and pasta parmesan Pasta. Hallelujah. National Who pasta knew? day. It's National it. pasta day, mm -hmm. right? Perfect. Pasta is uh, one of those comfort foods, and uh, of course, we incorporate some of our Creole uh, legacy in our, in our pasta dishes. So Absolutely. that's what we're going to do today. And these are some new salad dressings on the market. I love the French. My, that's my favorite. They have French, Italian, and um, ranch. So you can go to your supermarket and get that. But let's start on this dish. Okay. We have a pound, a half a pound of sausage in here, chopped up with a stick of butter. So you know this is going to be good. Yeah, no. You we're going to put uh, one bunch of green onions in there and yeah. saute that. And we're going to do this in TV time, so it's going to be a little quicker than on the recipe. The recipe's on your website, right? It is absolutely on our website. We have some mushrooms, about a cup of mushrooms. Okay. You yeah. can stir that. Good. I can see this You're one. You're doing I can good. Do. I, can do, I can do this, yeah. <laughs> And we're going to sprinkle some of Tony Sachery's bold in it. And it, I love to layer seasonings like this. It makes it so much yeah. better. And speaking of that bold, that's the flavoring that you're putting in here. But you guys do also have a new flavor, uh, a no salt option for yeah. folks that is now available on store shelves. I love also. this too because you can add your own salt. And um, it's still very delicious. It's got some brown sugar in it. So you can go to your store and uh, grab one of those too and put it in your pantry. How awkward do I look stirring this? Yeah, I'm pretty this much is delicious. Right. So we're going to put What's some that? Worcestershire sauce. Mm. Um, some cream sherry. Can you spell Worcestershire sauce? Yes. Worcestershire, I can't, yes. I can't. Real quick. I can't do it. We're going to put some of our Louisiana shrimp. This is a small mm -hmm. shrimp that we're going to put in there. Stir. Keep stirring. Okay, keep stirring. And you're going to cook that and saute that until that's nice and done. Mm -hmm. um, and we have some Parmesan cheese and some angel hair pasta. Now, if you're tailgating, you might want to use a different pasta, like a okay. thicker pasta, because yeah. uh, this won't hold up very you can well. Get some pasta in there. Yeah, so this is like a pasta laia. Yeah, so, um, so we're going to stir that up and pretend that it's cooked. <laughs> right. And right. we're going to add our Parmesan cheese and our angel hair pasta. This yeah. dish is so easy. Um, I used Tony Sachery's new sausage in it as well. So you can pick this up at your local grocery store. Uh, try their sausage. It's delicious just yeah. like their other products are. It seems are. so easy. And look at that. We've got a pasta done in three minutes. I know. We did it in three minutes TV time. Yeah. So um, this is a great recipe to have though. I It's a go-to for me and all my friends yeah. love it. Well, I'm not going to try the three-minute pasta. I'll try the actual no. pasta that's been sitting here. And I actually have tried it before, the, uh, before, before we got in here. And it was it was pretty amazing but uh, folks can buy these local uh, products in local stores is that right oh yes definitely well you can buy it nationally actually mm -hmm. um, these are great and Tony Satchers is great you know they're in in um, Opelousas uh, they're a family-owned company and have been for many many years pretty cool pretty cool so get out and celebrate National Pasta Day today try to hit up some of your local vendors and and try to buy some of these uh, local products that are actually out Always. on store shelves today we have the recipe for this posted right now on our website it's brproud.com you can try your hand at your own little shrimp and sausage parmesan pasta. Go Thank you so local, much for being here. Buy local. I Go local, buy that. local, eat local. Yeah. Love it. <laughs> All right, we're still ahead on Fox 44. First edition, we're talking about an Iberville Parish teenager making history in his own town, how he is becoming the first elected official in that parish's history. We'll have that story for you coming up next.
My check, my check. One, two, three, four. My check, my check. Um, Y'all gonna save me some pasta or no? I need some pasta. You know, everybody, you know, I'm just as part as the morning crew as y'all, even though I'm not there. <laughs> really? <laughs> Boo. Welcome back, y'all. The time is 8.32 and temperatures are still very, very cool. So if you like cool weather, this weather is perfect because we're seeing temperatures lower 50s, middle 50s for Gonzales, 57 and then 50 still in Kentwood. We have lots of cloud cover around the area and that cloud cover is going to stick with us today and we'll still warm up but it's going to take a little while. In fact, uh, we'll see temperatures in the upper 60s to lower 70s and just gonna step off to show you that we have a darling and very special fur cast for you guys. This baby, um, this actually has a story. So Missy, she sent this in just this morning. She said that her baby saved her life and he was born the same day in time that she lost her husband. He has a personality out of this world. So she says this is proof that God and her husband uh, sent him to her. So grab the tissues, yes. Today's going to be a pretty nice day to go to the park and then also to bring them for a walk, especially this evening. If you want to see your fur baby on FurCast, just send them my way on Facebook, Twitter, or email me at aruez at brproud.com. Now let's get a check on your traffic this morning. Overall, people are behaving themselves out there on the roads, but we do have some incidents to report on I-12 this morning. Pretty dense traffic right now near Denham Springs and then even on I-10 as well. So be sure to take it easy out there. And of course, your traffic is sponsored by the Murphy Law Firm. All right, Ashley, well, we're counting down the days until the start of holiday shopping. And if you're looking to get a head start, we have the perfect spot for you. Fox 44's Courtney Williams is live now at the Raising Cane's River Center with one local organization that's giving people a good reason to shop. Good morning, Courtney. Hey, good morning to you guys. Well, we've been talking about holidays all throughout the show, and there's actually something you could win here. So um, just tell me a little bit about this lovely vehicle we have behind us. So we are selling $10 raffle tickets, and you can enter into a chance to win this beautiful Mercedes. And it has been donated by Mercedes Benz of Baton Rouge, and it is a really great takeaway from holidays if you do win it. Awesome. So um, have you guys given away a car before? We have. We do it. We've been doing it for a while now. And this is the first year where we've actually upgraded our Mercedes to an SUV. And it has some beautiful black rims as well. And so it's a $10 raffle ticket. And your chances are one in, uh, depending on how many we sell. But, uh, you know, th the chances are great to win this beautiful car. Awesome. So holidays is kicking off today. The, the first shopping event actually starts at 9 o'clock. So how are you feeling? We're excited. Our holidays committee is here. Our volunteers are here. Really and truly, we could not do it without our holidays committee because if they weren't here and raising the money here at the River Center for the Junior League, we couldn't make the impact that we do in the Baton Rouge community. And to see women lined up outside ready to come in for 9 a.m., it's an exciting feeling. And I'm so honored and privileged to be the president of the league this year. And for anyone who wanted to come out and shop, kind of tell me you know just ticket prices and things where they can buy yeah so preferred shopping today at the door you can come in from 9 to 11 and the prices at the door is going to be $32 um, general admission is um, starting at 12 o'clock to 8 o'clock and then tomorrow from 9 to 8 and on Saturday 9 to 4 you can get your tickets at the door or you can go on holidays.org and get your tickets online and they'll be at will call for you all right awesome so again everything's kicking off shortly there's already a line outside so a lot of people are anxious to get in and start shopping but for more information all about holidays and how you can buy tickets you can definitely head over to our website at brproud.com or you can download our free br proud app but you also have a chance to win this car I'm not complaining about mine but i'd rather drive off in that one but for now send it back to you guys in the studio reporting live here i'm courtney williams 
All right, Courtney, thank you. Well, five days after that deadly building collapse in New Orleans, crews say they're now shifting their efforts from rescue to recovery. According to emergency officials, the chances for survival for the one worker still missing is diminishing and searching the partially collapsed construction site will become even more difficult ahead of a possible stormy weather weekend. And in your Fox 44 crime tracker this morning, a second suspect is waking up in jail charged with murder in connection to a deadly shooting. Deputies say this man, 19 year old Corey Sanders, is one of three men connected to the shooting of 23 year old Reg Reginald Cossett Jr. back in early September. Cossett's body was found dumped at the Highland Road Community Park. And now to your local election headquarters. The state is now accepting public comment on the plan to spend $1.2 billion in flood mitigation funds. That proposed plan outlines the state's approach to funding projects, data collection, as well as modeling and policy measures, all of which align with the watershed initiatives objectives. Public comments are being accepted either online or via mail, and you'll need to have them in before close of business on November 29th. Democratic Governor John Bell Edwards and Republican businessman Eddie Rispone are trading attacks in their first TV ads after the primary election and just a few weeks until the November runoff. Rispone is doubling down on keeping his image aligned with President Donald Trump. Newly released ads show highlights from President Trump's rally in Lake Charles, but you might notice that Rispone never makes an appearance. It's a stark contrast to what the campaign of Governor John Bell Edwards is putting out in their ads. Louisiana cannot take four more years of a liberal Democrat governor raising your taxes. Four years ago, you elected me to pull Louisiana out of the ditch. Talked about working on both sides of the aisle to get the state's finances back in check. He also suggests that Responi will return in Louisiana to the days of former Republican Governor Bobby Jindal, a frequent target of Edwards. Remember, voters will head to the polls in the November runoff on Saturday, November 16th. And he's not old enough to drink and has not graduated from college, but one local Iberville Parish teen is preparing to be sworn in as the youngest person to sit on parish council. Our very own Fox 44's Crystal Whitman shows us how he's continuing a legacy to serve the community. I don't know, just something told me to run, so I just ran. Put my name in the head, qualified, and ran. While most college freshmen watch the election, Raheem Pierce is part of it all. The teen will be the youngest member of the Plaquemine City Council District 6 seat, and he's not slowing down. We caught up with him at City Hall. I want to bring accessibility and transparency to my constituents um, because I know that, you know, if you're not accessible or transparent, you don't know, you'll never know what the people need. In a campaign that was ran by his grandmother, who says he built a name for himself despite his young age, she says his passion to serve others has been in his blood since he was a young child. And I said, Raheem, if you old enough, I said, if you went to the military at 18, we would be proud of you to go fight for our country. So why can't the community allow you at 18 to fight for the community and the better to the community. Pierce ran a fierce campaign, beating out three other Democrats with 60% of the vote during Saturday's election. His grandma says she had no doubt that he would win. He loves not just District 6, but he loves everybody and he loves helping everybody. And I hope that one day when you hear the name and you see the face and he runs for another position, just remember that. This, he started off at 18, so if he have this passion at 18, it'll only grow as he gets older. So I just ask people to remember the name and the face because you will be seeing him in the future. And now that he's gotten a seat at the table, he's bringing in a new generation of young voters. Especially like my classmates, I dragged them out the house on election day. Yeah, y'all gonna vote. So, Crystal Whitman, Fox 44 News. And once Pierce takes office on January 1st, he will replace Councilwoman Courtney Lewis, who did not rerun for her seat. Well, we are tracking the tropics this morning as there appears to be something brewing in the Gulf of Mexico. Let's send it over to Fox 44 meteorologist Ashley Ruiz right now for more on the development. Ashley. Yes, good morning, you guys. We have Invest 96L. It's looking a little more organized this morning. The National Hurricane Center giving it an 80% chance for formation, and they're saying within the next several hours, just today, it's likely to become subtropical or tropical storm Nestor, and it is expected to move toward the northeast in the coming days, and I'm talking coming days, meaning tomorrow and into Saturday, and this is the area of where it could form and where it could potentially 
potentially go. Most models are bringing it toward the Florida panhandle at this time, but there are several scenarios that could play out. But as of right now, it does look like it would aim for the Florida uh, panhandle. Scenario one would be it clips the mouth of the Mississippi River barely, and that would lead to some coastal flooding and some flooding rains as well. And then we would see some sh uh, showers here locally, but not much. The, the worst side of the storm would be to the east side, obviously. And then it would take aim for Florida. S uh, scenario number two, it heads straight for Florida. We'd get rough uh, seas here, so it wouldn't be a good weekend to be out on the boat whatsoever, but we wouldn't see any local impacts here. In fact, we would be mostly dry. And then scenario number three, that would head closer to southeast Louisiana, and that would bring us more impacts, but it's not looking likely whatsoever at this time. But again, the spaghetti models are pretty much bringing it all to the Florida panhandle, but that could certainly change. There are a few outliers, but when we see that models are starting to agree, and especially the the long range models and then the, the global models start to agree, then the confidence begins to grow. But we'll keep you posted on air and online, and then we'll have some more coming up in just a few minutes. Thanks, Ashley. Coming up, Baton Rouge Ballet Theater is kicking off its season opening performance, Ballet X. And that company is uh, going to make a premiere here, or coming back from 2015, I should say. We'll sit down with the theater's marketing director to talk about it. That's coming up next on Fox 44 First Edition. Hits there. Sarasota, actually. Um, I think they'll be. I think she'll be okay if it mm -hmm. looks like where it's going. Not a great beach day, maybe. No. <laughs> uh huh. All right, guys, we're about 15 minutes away from the 9 o'clock hour, and sitting with me now is Christine Perkins, who works with the Baton Rouge Ballet Theater. 
so cool because it's ballet and theater and you've yep. got a premiere coming up that's really extravagant and exciting. Tell me about it. Right, it's our first show of the season. It opens the season with a bang. Uh, it's Ballet X. They're a Philadelphia company and it's the perfect example of what a little 10 person company can do. And if you've seen you, So You Think You Can Dance, um, they have to do everything. These kids have to do everything. It's a really selective company of 10 and they are just phenomenal. They really push the limits of what classical dance can be. Well, explain that too in, in regards to classical dance. I mean, because obviously mm -hmm. when you think classical, you don't think of the TV show that you just mentioned, So You Think You Can Dance. It's, it's right. a lot more entertaining than that. It's at very athletic and describe right. their style. Right, well, it's, um, they're all ballet trained, but um, they, they're, they're just very versatile, athletic, graceful all at the same time. So their style of choreography is just kind of anything goes. And, um, and so it's very entertaining for audiences. They were here four years ago and um, audiences begged for them to come back. That's fabulous. So we're bringing, along with the Manship Theater, we're hosting them to come back again. It's, it's be this Sunday, um, two shows at mm -hmm. two and seven. Perfect. So we're really, really excited. And then just, I, I'm really impressed with actually Ballet X and the accolades that they have because you mentioned that it's just a 10 person group. Right. But the New York Times, I think, referred to them as among America's best dancers, um, and, the, and, um, and even Dance Magazine has put them on the cover of, of their product of their um, publication this month. So that just shows you how much really exactly. they're making a difference. Um, and I think they said uh, Ballet X is taking all the right risks and I it's love working. It. Yeah. yeah, if you're not really into ballet, like this is definitely a chance to oh, yes. bring someone to sort of introduce them to it because it's a very high energy performance. Exactly. And this is just the beginning to a long season of successful performances as well. Right, right. This is just the beginning of our season. Um, we'll have Nutcracker coming up in December. And then after that, an exciting show called She Moves celebrating the power of women, um, especially the suffrage, since this is the 100th year anniversary of the women's right to vote. Wow. So it's kind of all revolving around that. So yeah, season tickets are still available. That can go through batonrougeballet.org. Tickets specifically for this production are uh, available at the manshiptheater.org or in person once you get there at the, at the uh, production. It sounds fabulous. Anything else you'd like to add? Tickets Come are 25 <laughs> to uh, $50, and um, we, we still have some tickets available left at all price points. And that's a very reasonable price yeah, range, for I sure. So. Definitely. It sounds like a good date night. And then the rest of the things you have for the season sound really incredible as well. Right, it's um, it's really a good season that we've laid out for the year. So well, looking forward to it yes. for sure. Thank you. And guys, you can always log on to br.com, brproud.com, excuse me, that is to get more information. And we have a link to purchase tickets for this premiere as well. All right, so.